how many of you realize that alcohol is a serious health issue in lots of countries? And how many of you know someone who has a problem or had a problem with alcohol? Thank you. Thank you. As you can tell, I'm more at ease in the mountains than on a stage. So, let's start with the beginning. How do we obtain alcohol? Alcohol is made of um, glucose okay, great. in the presence of yeast. Yeast is very important, otherwise nothing happens. And the temperature must not be more than 37 degrees. That way we produce ethanol and CO2. I put up there a few chemical formulas for alcohol. The one we are interested in today is the second one, ethanol. Not a very complex molecule. You see it's only two carbons and five hydrogen. And then the uh, OH. Here, at a glance, you can see the countries who consume the most alcohol. The deeper blue the color, the darker the color, the more they consume. And you can see Bhutan is not in the darker ones. To reassure you, definitely not to be found in the, in the 10 top consumers. The, the, last, the last column to the left, say, the way it says total, is the amount of alcohol consumed per person, per adult, from the age of 15 only, per year. And it's pure alcohol, we're not talking about liters of wine or spirits, like we're talking alcohol. Now, according to the World Health Organization, in 2010, that's where Bhutan was standing, 0 0.7. But as it's been hinted already, <coughs> they, uh, if we take into account all the commercial drinks, the industrial drinks, and not just the beer and the local alcohol brewed here, then, in 2002, it was already, in Bhutan, 6.2 liters. And within eight years, it went up to almost eight and a half liters. In France, where I come from, the leading cause of death for the age group 15 to 34 is alcohol. That's 22% of all death in France, in that age group, is due to alcohol. In Bhutan, we have 59% of the population who is under the age of 24. So I think those figures should push us to do something about it sooner rather than later. Alcohol is the most harmful drug there is. This is not me saying, it's an article from the journal The, journal, the Lancet, pretty serious magazine. We could argue that people who drink alcohol only harm themselves, but that would be ignoring so social violence, domestic violence, road traffic accidents, uh, child abuse, and so on and so on. So we can't ignore that. Now, how come I'm so interested in alcohol? And, well, it's because it has touched me personally. And I will tell you more about this. This is a family reu reunion where um, my sister is the little girl wanting to be seen. And my grandfather is just behind my head and the rest are members of family all dead. It is October 1997. It's already dark outside. I get to this little local hospital and I go and see the nurse and I tell her, 
I'm very sorry I'm late. <clears throat> but I've just arrived from London to see my godfather. And she says, oh, don't worry. I'll take you to his room. He's been waiting for you. And I follow her in this brightly lit corridor. And when I get to his door, I pause for a moment. I dread to see what I'm going to discover. I open the door very slowly. And there he is in his bed. He waves feebly to me, asks me to come to see him. And he says, Nick, I'm really glad I could make it. And I said, I'm here. I give him a big hug. And there's something strange. I don't recognize his smell. Is it the smell of hospital disinfectant? The sweat? Or maybe the dark yellow liquid in a bottle underneath his bed? connected to his tummy. He asked me to touch him. He wants me to touch his huge bulging tummy under the sheets. And he wants to share with me. And I see the veins running all across very dilated veins on his abdomen. And it just makes me so sad. And he tells me, I didn't know it would be so hard. I stand there, don't know what to say. I have a dry mouth, tears in my eyes. He was 68, and he was my favorite uncle. So this is why I decided to look in a little bit more into alcohol and I got interested. And this is why I'm so motivated to help him to come off it. So how come alcohol has such a strong appeal? Well, it's to do with economics. We all know money makes the world go round. And in the UK alone, because that's where I live now, the brewers and the pubs are worth 22 billion every year. And worldwide, the alcohol beverage industry has topped $1 trillion in 2014. So, why do people drink? Well, if you ask them, they will give you all sorts of answers. <laughs> to relax, to feel better after work, to feel in a good mood. And the worst, to forget that they are doing a job they don't like, and they gave up their dreams to do that kind of job. That's the worst to me. And what does alcohol really do? It goes deep into the brain, disconnects from, from the, from the over-control and lets all the emotions come out. They all come out wild and it's like a car who's lost his driver and the engine is in control. People who are, when they are drunk, not only do they lose control, but they, they become a victim of their addiction. <clears throat> when somebody drinks to try and relieve their anxiety, it works for a while. Yes, you can drink alcohol and it will relieve your anxiety for a little bit. But as you can see, every time it wears off, the level of anxiety goes up a little bit more. And then you do it again, and it goes up a little bit more. 
the problem with this is you, not only do you need a higher quantity more alcohol to obtain the same effect, but you end up higher than where you started. And this is why alcohol is not a, a good idea. So, if this is the case, how come people don't stop? Why do they continue? Well, it's because still they obtain some sort of relief, even if it's temporary. They will feel better for a little while. And there are two main reasons. First, it's that addiction is inherited. We know there is a part of it inherited in this, in this disease. The other reason is, for some people, it has become a part of their process to how to be in society and how to feel good enough in order to go out and be with people. I found that one last night, I really love it. That's a great one. <laughs> so, what are the solutions? Well, <laughs> the gold standard is abstinence, I'm afraid. There, are, there is no other real solution. And uh, the 12 steps from the uh, AA, Alcoholic Anonymous, is one of them. And um, there is an old medication that um, makes you very, very sick if you drink alcohol when you, when you are taking that medication. It's a sort of a reminder you decided to, to stop, but if you don't, then it will remind you. Now that's an old medicine. There is now a later one that came out uh, early in 2014, and uh, that allows to reduce the urge to binge drink. And that medication I've been using a little bit, a few, few months now, and it has mixed results with my patients. So, what do we really need to do? Well, let's put it simply. We need to welcome all our emotions, and we need to accept our emotions. Be in them, be in the now that I heard before and accept that we can't be always joyful. Because if we try and anesthetize or numb one set of emotion, it will numb all of them. Yes, we can numb anger, we can numb sadness, we can numb fear, but it will take away joy and real happiness with it. And this is the tragedy of alcoholism. <laughs> so really, what we need to accept to do is whatever it takes. And one method that this picture is showing is a practice of meditation practice of arts and there are many other healthy solutions and uh, really meditation is something I practice preferably on skis and I'm not talking about ski down and ski resorts this is just going up the mountain that was last month and that's the highest mountain in my country which is uh, the Mont Blanc. So, that is what we do. This is a village where I used to be a GP in, just where the clouds are, called Le Rousse, a tiny village, much smaller than Timpu. And um, what I'm asking is, how can we now learn from this? I would like to do a little experience with you. If you could all of you just, if it helps, you can close your eyes. But I would like you to bring back a memory of a good time. A nice and pleasant memory. There, that's it. Not, it doesn't need to be complicated. How do you feel? 
Right. Now, for just a few seconds, no more, just a few seconds, bring back a unpleasant memory. Okay, stop, that's enough. How did you feel there? Alright. Now, bring back another pleasant memory. Or, all the same as before, bring it back, go back in. Experience it, feel it, breathe through it. How do you feel? Right. So this is the proof that actually we are, we have the ability to choose our emotions. We have it. We have the connection between our mind and our emotions. I show it here because very often, for me at least, they are here. But what alcohol does, it disconnects it. So you're losing that connection. So what's the point? And I would like to leave you with this recommendation, or a question rather, is are you prepared to learn and train your brain to produce the emotion you want? Thank you very much.